What's up, YouTube? Ryan Panny here. Hope you guys are doing reasonably well. Hope your 2021 is off to a good enough start. It's really shitty that this has to be my first video of the year, but I just, I, I had a bunch of stuff to say about it that felt important to me. So here we are. So as I'm sure most, if not all of you have heard by now, heavy metal legend, proper word there, Alexi Leho, who is most famous for fronting the band Children of Bodom, has passed away. We don't have a cause of death yet at this time. He was just 41 years old, which I feel like a lot of people who casually followed the band didn't realize just how young he was on those classic Bodum records. Like he was 17 on the first one, which means he was probably 15, 16 when he, when he wrote all that great material. Now, when famous people die, I feel like their fans and followers make a, a bit too big of a spectacle of how devastated they are. And I'm gonna spare you guys a lot of that because I, I feel like all the reasons that I'm upset are selfish. You know, it's, it's the thought that I don't get to see Alexi live anymore and I don't get to review his music and now we collectively have to go through the process of like adjusting to talking about him and his amazing catalog of music in the past tense. Which is rough, undeniably, but it's Alexi's friends and family, the people who loved him and cared about him and knew him personally, the people who basically just lost a part of themselves. That is who we should be praying for and thinking about. Death is just a brutal thing, and it's not the kind of loss, especially a sudden one like this, that you would wish on your worst enemy. So my sincere condolences to Alexi's friends and family, those who knew him and loved him personally. And to sort of fulfill my role here, I would like to use the remainder of this video to make four key points that his death has me thinking about a lot today and just, just feel important to say as a hard rock and heavy metal commentator. First though, just real quick before I get into that, my personal experience with Alexi and with Children of Bonus Music. As I've mentioned in uh, several times in various videos on my channel, Children of Bodom were easily one of the top five most listened to bands of my whole childhood. Getting into them at the end of middle school, kind of like middle school going into high school, was really the catalyst for a pretty seismic shift in not only the quality of metal I was listening to, but just the type of metal I was listening to. I just fell in love with their fusion of European and American metal. They were totally unique. No fucking band sounded like them. Because the, the, the thing is, their music was, was too grounded and Alexi's songwriting was too in your face, pun intended, and his guitar playing was way too like Randy Rhodes and 80s influenced for, you know, the Kalmas and the Winter Suns and the Insomniums of the world. They didn't quite fit in with that style of metal. But then obviously they were totally different from their American contemporaries. I mean, Lamb of God, Trivium, they sounded nothing like them. So they definitely occupied a unique space in metal. And I remember they were one of the very first bands that I really made a point to see live as a young kid, because I was just fucking blown away by the Stockholm Knockout DVD. I must have I must have got it for like Christmas 08, because that, that timeline makes sense. I remember watching it late at night over the holiday season and just being like, what the fuck is this? It was just the coolest thing I'd ever seen at that point. And, and looking back, Definitely some of my favorite shows I've ever been to were Children of Bodom shows, without a doubt. Lots of amazing memories. And when I really fell in love with the band even more was when I started to learn their songs on guitar, when I got good enough. I, I distinctly remember that guitar playing kind of got fun for me when I started to play Children of Bodom songs. Because Alexi's playing just had so much personality to it. And, and for a young player like me, it was just the right mix between a certain level of technical challenge and then just catchiness and, and fun and memorability. And as I mentioned before on this channel, I was actually in a band that did Children of covers and Synergy covers. And that was unbelievably fun. So that is also largely responsible for the special place that Alexi and Children of music occupy in my heart. Let's see, we did, I'm trying to remember what we did live in that band. Uh, Silent Night, we did. Um, Every Time I Die, Mask of Sanity as well from that record. Um, Boat After Midnight we did too, Smile Pretty. And then we jammed on a lot of others. Uh, Follow the Reaper, Six Pounder. I think that was the first one I learned for, for that band. And, uh, God, what else? Oh, Bone Beach Terror, which is like my favorite song to this day to play by them. Downfall 2, yeah, tons of fun memories there. And then Synergy, we did Fourth World, we did Sin Trade. Um, I'm trying to remember if we did Shadow Island. Not live, but we jammed that one. Warrior Princess, Midnight Madness. I'm sure there are a lot of young players out there who can relate to that experience, just like jamming Chill to Bone stuff, which is so fucking, it, it, it's fun to be able to play it because there's a certain level of skill that it needs, but then it also just sounds so fucking full with a full band with keys and guitars and, and vocals and drums. It's just everybody in the band brought something unique to the table. So that actually brings me to my first point here. If you're a guitar player watching this, and I know a lot of my viewers are, just metal fans in general are, if you're at least in like an intermediate skill level or higher, learn some Children of Bodom songs. They, they are so fun to play. And like I said before, Alexi will teach you just as much about technical skill as he will about articulation 
and personality. Like he is just, the more you dive into his licks, the more he is just the opposite, the polar opposite of, of, of a mindless shredder. Like if you learn some necrophagist and then you learn some Chona Bottom songs, there will be an enormous difference in just how fun they are to play and just how alive the songwriting feels. And there are a bunch of resources out there for learning his stuff too, that, that's what makes it great. Like he did, I think, three Rock House DVDs. Those are pretty cool. Those are like step-by-step -step videos. There are tab books too for, for Are You Dead Yet? and for Blood Drunk, although I can't exactly speak to their accuracy personally. And actually, I've covered a bunch of his stuff on this channel years ago, and of course, I would do a tutorial upon request. I'm sure I can still play this stuff. And just in general, he was such a popular player that there are a lot of people out there on the internet who have dedicated time to figuring out his playing, so you can probably just find some good online tabs as well. And next, I just want to stress this point, because this is really important. If you love a band, or if you love an artist, go see them live. Spend the fucking money, do the fucking two and a half hour drive if you have to. Like I said, some of my favorite memories ever in my life of all the things I've done are Children of Bodom shows. And yeah, sometimes I drove a little bit out of my way, sometimes I blew off other shit, especially in college, you know, I blew off mixers and parties and dates and whatever to see bands I love. But you look back and it's like, what memory is easier to replace? Fucking going out with people you go out with all the time or seeing a band at a particular moment in time. Like, do you have any idea how many obnoxious fucking boomers I've had to listen to say, man, in the 70s, I had a chance to see Led Zeppelin and then I didn't, now I wish I did, but... Right? It's like, this is a very special, specific moment in time. Whatever show you're at, it's the only show like that that's ever gonna happen. So fucking go. Just if you're ever on the fence, that's just my personal advice because I've also made the wrong decision and gone to stupid shit instead of, you know, I remember specifically I blew off a three hour Machine Head show. Remember when they were doing that evening with? And that was on the, the Bloodstone and Diamonds record, which at that point I liked that record. And so there was such a nice catalog of songs there. And it's like, I think I went to some like party at UMass or something. So again, make the effort because that show is a special moment in time that you, that you can't get back. Also, another really important point that I cannot believe I left out of the video. I guess, you know, look, it was an emotional video to shoot. I was kind of stuttering and having a hard time finding the exact words to describe how much this music meant to me. So I'll just kind of insert this into the video randomly out of sequence. If you have not yet, check out the band Synergy, which is Alexi's other band. It's a really cool power metal band. The, the guitar solos are like these long extended things where Rupe actually plays to. Unbelievable stuff. I guess first songs to listen to. The best record is the last one, Suicide by My Side. But I would start with Spit on Your Grave, amazing guitar song. Midnight Madness, Bitches Back. Yeah, those are, that's probably where I would start. Well, that's important that I get out. And then, and then third, kind of putting on my music critic hat here for a second. I actually talked about this a bit in my recent Name That Children of Bodom Song video that I did like a month ago. And I actually made a whole video about it years and years ago, which I probably wouldn't recommend watching because of those videos I made back then sucked. But just, it's really important to mention, the Children of Bodom catalog is way more even than what any metal purist might lead you to believe. Like they might've lost a bunch of fans when they kind of Americanized their sound and, and the height of that would be between 2005 and 2011. The three albums under fire, I guess, would be Are You Dead Yet, Blood Drunk, and Relentless Reckless Forever. But you look back in retrospect and those albums totally hold up. Whatever preferences you may have as a fan between different eras of the band, all those albums did was expand their sound and make their catalog that much more well-rounded and interesting. Listening to Blood Drunk and listening to Something Wild back to back is like two different bands. And the fact that they were able to make pretty consistent music across very different styles is impressive. And an, another part of what makes their career that much more interesting than the average band. So that is a rather strong opinion of mine. And that's something that I hope that we can all agree on in retrospect that this band made consistently great music despite some pretty major changes to their sound. Like they started off with kind of a kind of an enthroned darkness, triumphant black metal mixed with neoclassical. And then they evolved to more pure neoclassical. Then they evolved to kind of a power metal and new wave of British heavy metal informed take on, on mellow death. And then of course they would go on to incorporate thrash metal and groove metal. And it was all good despite what personal preferences you might have between the records. And that brings me to my final point here, which is that it's now up to us to maintain the Children of Bodom legacy as the fans. Because I feel like metal musicians and fans alike have a lot they can learn from Children of Bodom. And you know, when the year 2050 rolls around and we're still having the same conversation about who are the best metal bands of all time, I really want Children of Bodom to be in that conversation. I would love to see the greatness of Alexi and the whole band transcend generations. Like not this is the same commercial level exactly, but Pantera is a good example, right? Their music is basically as big now as it was in 1992. 
Like, I wasn't even born when Vulgar or Far Beyond Driven came out, and those are two albums that I grew up on and that I love. So that's something that I will always do my best on, just educating people on the greatness of this band and, and what made them great. Because, you know, we learn a lot from bad music by criticizing it, by saying, okay, this is what not to do, but we learn just as much, if not more, from really exemplary music. And yeah, if you're watching this video and you're new to the band, um, I've actually made a bunch of content about them. You can go check that out. Obviously, I'm happy to answer any questions about navigating the band's catalog. What are the best songs and eras, depending on your preferences? I'd be happy to help you with all that. Yeah, it sucks to say this, but rest in peace, Alexi Leho, one of my childhood heroes, and my sincerest condolences to his family and friends. It's a huge loss for us, but I'm sure it's an even bigger one for them. And I'm gonna go blast some children bonus music right now. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video or not subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so by clicking right over here, as well as checking out any of the other rock or metal related content that I publish here on a weekly basis. I really appreciate you guys watching, liking, disliking, just engaging in any fashion. Twitter, Instagram handle at Ryan Music. Again, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you soon.